Hello everybody, welcome back, and in today's video we'll be going over another very instructive game I found that was between Max Weiss and Lewis Paulson. The beginning of the game wasn't very important, so we can just go right through it. So, the game started off e4, c5, knight c3, e6, knight f3, a6, d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, queen to c7, bishop b2, knight f6, castles, knight to c6, knight to c6, a3, bishop b7, king h1, preparing the move f4, because if you play f4 now, the problem is knight takes d4, queen takes d4, and bishop c5, and that pins the queen to the king. So king h1, castles, f4, d6, bishop f3, bishop d7, knight c2, rook a c8, c3, rook f d8, knight to g3, bishop f8, f5, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, bishop b5, rook e1, e5, queen to, queen to f2, knight to d7, bishop b3, and now here is the critical position. And black makes a critical mistake and plays f6. Now I believe knight to c5 was a better move, and uh, to be honest, I think black is totally fine here, probably even equal. So why is f6 a wrong move? Well, it's because white can play bishop e2. And now this basically forces black to exchange bishops, because after bishop c6, from his bishop c4, king h8, and bishop e6. And if the pawn was on f2, it would cover this e6 square, and uh, black didn't wouldn't have to worry about this. And after bishop takes e2, rook, eight, rook takes e2, if you evaluate the position, you can see that white is clearly better, because look at this bishop on f8. It's hemmed in by all these pawns. And the move f6 didn't help it at all, because it just places another pawn on the dark squares, which is the same color as his bishop. On the other hand, if you look at white's dark bishop, it's not hemmed in at all, because of these two pawns are on light squares. In, in addition, it, it uh, exchanges light bishops off, which we can control this key square, which the, the knight might later occupy. So here, black played queen to c4, rook to d1, rook c6, rook e d2. Now this prevents plans like bishop e7, rook d8, and then bring the bishop out to b6 to try to exchange, because it would just lose this d6 pawn. Rook d c8, king g1, b5, queen to e2, knight b6, and now, great move, bishop takes b6, removing the last defender of this d5 square, so that this knight can go there now. Rook takes b6, knight f1, heading for the outpost on d5, with knight to e3, and then d5. a5, queen f3, rook b c6, knight to e3, heading there. Queen to c5, king h1, moving the king out of the pin because now the, because, uh, the knight can move then. Bishop b7, knight d5, bishop d8, queen h5, h6, queen to e8 check, king h7, rook d3. A rook lift trying to bring the rook into the game with rook h3, rook g3. Queen to a7, queen g6 check. I think this is unnecessary. I think rook h3 immediately wins the game. Because after something like b4, uh, you have check, king h8. On uh, king g8, you have rook takes h6. So on king h8, rook d d3, bringing the other rook into the game. And if you try to take on c3, problem is check, 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 and then check. So queen g6 instead, which uh, Weiss played. King g8, rook g3, king h8, rook h3, queen d7, g4. I still think rook d3 is better, but I guess g4 is fine too, with the plan of g5. After f takes g5, f6, this just weakens control of this h6 pawn. Rook a7, f takes g7 check, queen takes g7. The h6 pawn falls, king g8, queen to e8, queen f8, and rook h8 check. Black resigned here because after king takes h8, it loses the queen to queen takes f8. So I hope you enjoyed, and this will help you in your games because it does highlight how an exchange of a favorable exchange of bishops can really set the motion for 
kingside attack or it'll just gain you a strategical advantage in general and lead to a victory. I hope this helps you in your future games. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.